So for number one, we're finding if the following series converge or diverge. And for letter A, we have the series um, from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n times n plus 2. So in saying the convergence or divergence, this should be relatively simple here. Um, the main reason is, is that this simplifies to 1 over n squared plus 2n. Uh, so that's easily shown to converge by comparison test. So you should kind of have in your mind already, this kind of looks like a p-series, so chances are comparison to a p-series is going to be the easiest way to do it. So remember that if we think something converges, to show it converges by comparison test, you need to find a convergent series that is larger than it. In other words, this has to be smaller than some convergent series you know. Easiest one in this case would be to the series 1 over n squared. So if our series that we have is smaller than something we know already converges, then this definitely converges. So all we have to think about is, is this inequality true? Well, this denominator is always going to be larger than this one, which means this series is always smaller than that one. Therefore, yes, this is true. So this is convergent by comparison test. For this one, though, we also need to find the sum. Now, finding the sum of a series, finding the actual sum of the series is usually something you can't do, but in for a series of this form, we can, and that's because this works by partial fraction decomposition, and we can turn this into a telescoping series. So whenever you see that your denominator is factorable, and it has to do with polynomials, you should immediately think, you might be asked for the sum, and it's going to be a telescoping series if you do. So what we know is that 1 over n times n plus 2 is equal to some constant a over n plus some constant b over n plus 2, using our partial fraction formula from a long time ago. We know then that a times n plus 2 plus bn com have to combine to be 1. And you can figure out a and b here just by choosing n's that are appropriate. For example, if n equals 0, so if n equals 0, this term is 0, and we just get 2a equals 1. So we get a equals 1 half. If n is equal to negative 2, we choose that because that makes this term 0. We get the equation 1 equals negative 2b. In other words, b equals negative So we got our a and b. In other words, this series can be rewritten. Instead of this, we can write it as its separate fractions. Since a and b are both 1 half, we can also put the 1 half in front of the series, which means a would just be then 1 over n, and b would be negative 1. All right, so what I wrote here is exactly equivalent to this. However, this is much easier to find the sum of, or possible, whereas this, you would have to do what we were doing here. So, this is going to be a telescoping series, and there's two things that tip you off to that. First of all, you have a subtraction of two fractions that immediately key you in that it's probably telescoping. Secondly, your denominators are shifted by a certain amount. That's the other thing that lets you know these terms are going to cancel out. So what we have here is we have 1 half, and what we want to do is let's just write out the first few terms of the series, because chances are, since those two uh, conditions I just talked about are holding, this is going to be telescoping, things are going to cancel out. So our first term is when n equals 1. Our term then would be 1 minus 1 third, if we plug in 1 for n. Second term would be 1 half minus 1 fourth. Keep in mind, your parentheses here actually don't really matter because we're adding each term anyway. Third term, one-third minus one-fifth, and I'll stop there. Because as you can see here, we have a negative one-third and a positive one-third. Those are going to cancel out. You can imagine the next few terms are going to be 
4 and 6, 5 and 7, on and on. So this 1 fourth is going to cancel out with some 1 fourth down the line. This negative 1 fifth is going to cancel out. The only things that didn't come up twice are the 1 and the 1 half. And a good rule of thumb is if your terms are a certain amount apart, like in this problem, we have n and n plus 2. So those are two terms apart from each other. That's how many things you're going to have left over. We should have two things left over. So we get 1 plus 1 half. And these are going to cancel out all the way to infinity, so we don't have to worry about that. So what we're going to get here is 1 half times 1 plus 1 half. Well, 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves, and half of 3 halves is 3 fourths. So the sum of this series is going to be 3 fourths.